In the last video, we learned how we can measure the distances to nearby stars by measuring their parallax. That is, the apparent change in sky position of a nearby star over the course of a year due to the Earth's motion around the Sun. And we noticed that there was a limitation in measuring this parallax due to the fact that the farther away a star is, the smaller this parallax is going to be and the more difficult it's going to be to measure. So currently, the uh, best, uh, the most distant objects that we can measure using this method are about 500 parsecs away, uh, or about 1600 light years. Now, once the Gaia mission launches in, in 2013, and when it takes its data over the course of uh, a couple years after that, this will increase, but this is our, our current limit right now. So we have to ask, how do we actually measure distances that are farther away from this? Because compared to the size of the, of the Milky Way, this is really just the local neighborhood around the sun. So how do we measure the distances to stars that are farther away than this? Well, to start, let's first look at these objects that we can measure their distances and see what we can learn about these stars. And one specific thing that we can learn about them is their luminosity or how bright they are. Now, if you've watched the video on brightness, luminosity, and flux, you may remember this equation. This equation F equals L over 4 pi r squared. And what this equation says is that if I have a source of light, the flux of that light, that's how much light is actually hitting one square meter of my telescope, is related to the brightness of an object, the luminosity, so how much light energy is, it, is that entire star giving off every second? And it's also related to the distance from the object. So since we know what the distance is, uh, we've used our parallax measure, measurement to get the distance to that star, and we can easily measure how much light from that star is actually hitting our telescope, we can find the luminosity. So we use this to find the luminosity L. Now we can do something else as well by putting the light coming from this star through various filters we can measure the color of the star so we can measure the color and that might seem like a weird thing to measure but you'll we'll see in a second that it has a very uh, uh, very helpful uh, use so when we do these two things we can we find the luminosity and we find the color of all of these stars that we've measured their distances to and we can plot the luminosity of each star versus its color and we get a diagram that looks like this this diagram is known as the Hertzsprung Russell diagram so Hertzsprung uh, Russell diagram Uh, very often abbreviated as HR diagram, so HR diagram. And what this says, what this does, is it takes the color of the star, so, so this at the bottom is a, a measurement of color, and plots it against how bright the star actually is. So if you're if you're farther to the right hand side of this figure, you're, uh, the star is more red. If you're farther to the left, it's blue. If you're lower down in the diagram, it's a dimmer star. If you're higher up in the diagram, it's a much brighter star. And this luminosity is measured in, in, measured in comparison to the sun. So the sun is one, so anything on this line is as bright as the sun is. Uh, then we go 10, so up here is 10 times as bright as the sun, 100 times as bright as the sun, 1,000 times. So up here are extremely bright stars, and down here are extremely dim stars. So on this graph, each of these individual points represents a star that its distance was measured using the Hipparchos satellite that I mentioned in the last video, and that helps us get the luminosity of the star, and then its color was measured, and put on this graph. And there's about 20,000 different stars represented on this graph. And for reference, our sun would be about here on this particular graph. So that's kind of a, a reference point. And one might expect that 
if I plotted the luminosity of a bunch of stars versus their color, one might expect that I would just get a random scattering of stars all over the place. But we see that there are actually very, very strong trends and patterns that we get from the data. There's a, a kind of diagonal line of stars that follow here and a couple of other features that are, that are clearly noticeable. And from this, we can actually learn a huge amount about the life cycles of stars and, and all sorts of things about stellar evolution. But I'm going to use this graph to show us how we can measure the distances to more distant stars. So let's say that uh, I'm here on the Earth and I want to measure the distance to, to some star over here. And let's say that this distance is too far away for a parallax measurement to work. Well, instead of measuring the parallax, I can first measure the color of the star. So let's say I measure the color of the star and it's slightly bluer than our sun. So our sun's right here on the diagram. It's going to be slightly to the left. So if I know what its color is, let's say it's color lies on this line, then I have a very good guess as to what range its luminosity has to be. So then I have an idea of what the luminosity has to be. And if I, uh, if I rewrite our flux equation, flux equals luminosity over 4 pi r squared, I have a guess for the luminosity. Uh, I can measure how much light is actually hitting my telescope per square meter. So I can measure the flux from the star. So using this information, I can find the distance to the star. So find r. I know about what the luminosity has to be. I know what the flux is. I can measure it directly. I can find the distance to that star, even though it is too far away to measure with a parallax measurement. Now, there's some difficulties here. First, this is a very wide range of, of luminosities I can have. This covers a, a least a factor of 10 difference in how bright this star is. So if my luminosity isn't very accurate, well, then my distance measurement isn't going to be very accurate. Furthermore, what if I measure the color of this star and I find that it's a redder star? Well, if it's a red star, I would have a very hard time distinguishing whether it should be in this part of the HR diagram or in this part. And these, these two different parts of the diagram have very, very different brightnesses. So I would not know which of those brightnesses I should use to calculate my distance. So how can we actually get a better measurement to the distance to, to these objects? Well, let's say I look in the sky and instead of seeing an individual star, I see a cluster of stars. And there are these objects that are known in the sky that are known as globular clusters. And they're big, dense groups of stars. And there can be hundreds or even thousands of stars within just a few light years of each other. And for comparison, the distance from us to the nearest star is only three light years. So imagine hundreds and thousands of stars all in that same area. So these are all going to be close enough together that we can say that all of these stars are essentially the same distance away. Compared to the distance from the Earth to the cluster, the cluster isn't very big, so we'll call it all the same distance away. So now we can measure the color of each of the stars in this cluster and measure the flux of each of the stars in the cluster. Look at each star individually and say how much light is hitting my telescope. So we have this cluster of stars and let's make a guess as to how far away it is. Let's say we're going to guess that it's 5,000 parsecs away. Well then for each of the stars using that individual guess we can get the luminosity of each of these stars if they're that distance away. And let's say we do this and we plot it on this diagram and all of these stars lie somewhere along you know, this line. Well then we've clearly underestimated the luminosity so if we've underestimated the luminosity well it's probably because our guess of the distance is too low. So maybe we'll say it's 6,000 parsecs away. And we do the same thing. We measure, we use that to calculate the luminosity. And maybe it'll say, well, now we have our line somewhere down here for all of those stars. So we still underestimate a bit. Maybe go up to 6,500 parsecs. And then we'll see that we actually match up with the line of stars that we would expect that make up the main sequence set of stars. So this is the method 
uh, which is sometimes referred to as spectroscopic parallax or main sequence fitting. And this method helps us measure the distance to clusters of stars. And this method, this main sequence fitting method, works to about uh, 10,000 parsecs. So uh, maybe a couple tens of thousands of parsecs. Or, so that's around you know 50,000 light years. So this covers most of the Milky Way galaxy. Most of Milky Way. So as long as we can see this cluster, uh, cluster of stars that are all fairly close together, we can match up their brightness with this, uh, with this HR diagram to help us figure out how far away they are. And we can do this fairly accurately. Now, there are still some limitations of this, of this method. If I get too far away, well, I might not be able to resolve these individual stars. So I won't be able to get the colors and the fluxes of each individual star. And if it's too far away, then these stars might be too dim in order to get a good measurement of their flux or of their color. So this still has limitations. We can't measure much outside of the Milky Way using this method. But this is the next step in the cosmic distance ladder. And we'll see how we can continue on with this cosmic distance ladder in the next video.